everybody. Welcome to Malt Music Whiskey Reviews. I am Eric. On the bar for today, we got a Lagavulin Heat Bomb Face Off. Lagavulin, 12 years old, 2021. First to Lagavulin, 12 years old, 2022. Which one's better? Which one's worth your money? We're going to get into all of that. Nose, taste, finish reviews coming right around the corner. But first, take a second, smash that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you uh, joining us uh, in the Malt Muser channel. Uh, I do drop whiskey reviews every Friday here on the tube. Also, Tuesday happy hour every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Would love to see you there. <clears throat> All right, let's get into this. First and foremost, Lagavulin. Isla Distillery, known for their incredibly smoky scotches. Um, some of the fattest stills in Scotland. And uh, that definitely plays a part in how smoky phenols getting into this whiskey. Take a look. Some pictures of that when you get a chance, their line arm, but their stills, uh, all part of the magic that creates the smokiness of a Lagavulin whiskey. Whoa. They do have a couple things in their core range, including their classic 16-year-old, which probably the most readily available, they have an eight-year-old as well, and a couple other small things in each year as part of Diageo, the big conglomerate company, which owns Lagavulin and many other distilleries. Um, they will do a Lagavulin, or a Diageo special release as part of that this year and every year. Uh, for about the last, I don't know, at least 10, 15 years has been the Lagavulin 12 years old at cask strength. Now, um, basically, the tail of the tape on these whiskeys, they are ex-bourbon cask. They are naturally colored. Um, and usually, well, we have a 12-year-old age statement. And definitely bottle at cask strength, as I said. This one is uh, the 2021, which you'll notice here has got this flaming lion on it. It is called the Lion's Fire. This one is bottled at 56.5% ABV. As I said, it is a natural color. It says natural cask strength. Um, not sure about chill filtration. I'm almost positive they are not chill filtered, but it does not say anything on here about that. So we do not know for sure. Fast forward to the 2022 version, just released a couple of weeks ago here in the States. Uh, same thing. You got the refill bourbon cask, but there is a, something a little different about this one. Um, this is also aged in virgin oak. Now, virgin oak, as you may know, um, basically cask that haven't been used before. You are essentially getting a lot more of the spice, sweet wood characteristics coming out of that virgin oak. Uh, to go here with the bourbon cask refill, 57.3%, so a little higher on the ABV. Um, this one's called the Flames of the Phoenix. Does not say anything about chill filtration. Again, on this 2022 release, Let me just double check here on the bottle. Natural cask strength. Yep, we are not sure. So take it for what it's worth. So last thing I want to mention here about Lagavulin 12 is for the last about four years, they have been releasing them with these kind of varying uh, artsy graphics on them, um, kind of fancying up these re these presentations. You will, if you search around, find bottles that look like this. This is the classic Lagavulin bottle that you will find their 16 in. This is also a 12-year cast rank, this one in particular from 2018. Um, so if you look at 2018 or back, you will still find 12-year-old cast ranks, and they will be coming in the classic Lagavulin box. So once again, we are looking at a cast rank 12-year-old single malt whiskey. <laughs> Refill bourbon is the same across both. The 2022 also has virgin oak. These are naturally colored. We are not sure about chill filtration, but I'm just positive that they are not chill filtered. So we're going to do a little comparison of these. See which one is better. I will just say for the record, um, I got both of these right around the same time. So I think the 12 from 2021 has been open maybe a week and a half longer. So these are both uh, pretty fresh open bottles. So we should have them right around the same time of oxidization. Okay, color-wise, this is the 2021, this is the 2022. Holding them up there, are not really anything in terms of a difference. We're just a little darker on the 2022. Okay, we're gonna start things off with the Lagavulin 12-year-old cast ring 2021, Lion's Fire. Let's see what we're working through. On the nose. Heavy smoke and sweetness is really the things popping here. The sweet notes you're getting on this. As you dig a deeper, spices. Uh, some of them soft, some of them more aggressive. 
Um, you get a little bit of barrel char. You're getting some kind of uh, marine, almost kind of herbal notes, but an intense citric sweet, almost bordering tropical fruit note. More smoky than peaty, but you can definitely tell the peat is in here, giving it a little bit of that earthiness. Yeah. Really nice nose on this one. We're going to move over here now to the 2022 version on the nose. Wow. Immediate difference. Much more oak cask driven spicier more of a fresh cut wood note as opposed to kind of a um, bourbon cask sweet spicy note this is much more oak forward wood fresh cut wood forward there's sweetness in there too of course you're getting a bit of vanilla a bit of caramel it's bacon there's like a nice kind of zestiness to this okay and on the fruitier side, on the sweetness, again, you go a little deeper, you get kind of a pear, apple, meatier quality to this. So really, when we compare the noses here, the 2021, a bit more classic bourbon cask, a um, bit more complex, 2022, more oak driven. Um, so you're getting more of a kind of woody cask influence on this. No surprise with that virgin oak um, and a bit of a smokier meat quality. Okay. Neat taste here, 2021 Lagavulin, 12 years old. Match, here we go. Hmm. Medium to oily viscosity. Arrives really initially with the sweetness and the kind of back of the earthiness. You got vanilla, caramel, a bit of this lemon citrus toffee note as it develops, it just gets huge and you get nailed in the face right away. This heavy dose of peat on the smoke. The smokiness is just wrapped around this whiskey entirely. The palate, spicy peat, you got some oak. Um, it's kind of like chili pepper. There's a, hmm, it's like an almondy marzipan note. Just behind everything here, hints of tropical fruit. Slightly pineapple, resinous, kind of um, even a little bit of orange. Medium long finish, sweet, charcoal, ash, smoky. So really this whiskey again is sweet and spicy and oaky. So you're really getting a lot of different things going on here. A lot of complexity, a lot to explore. Very nice stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to sip of water. 2022. Again, this is ex-bourbon cask and virgin oak. It is 0.8% more ABV. Here we go. Mm. Wow. Immediately notice the difference between these two. This one has darker oak notes. They are right front and center, along with the sweetness. As it builds and develops in your mouth, it you just get an assault on your tongue of spice, hot cinnamon candy. Um, there's Again, kind of the chili pepper thing, much more fresh cut wood. Again, very woody and oaky. Dark chocolate notes and slight coffee notes kind of come in as it goes into the finish, which is about medium, medium long. Similar finish as the other one in terms of length. Chocolate, vanilla, a little bit simpler. Um, maybe just a tad shorter than the 2021. That ash even stronger here on the 2022 as well. Okay, let me put some drops of water on this. I'm gonna do like six drops on each just to um, really give this an opportunity to show what else it has going for it. This is probably about a mil and a half, if not more. Or 
will be more than that, probably like two and a half mils. Okay. First of all, we're going to start with the 2022 with the water, uh, just to give it a shot here. Okay. Water is in. Nice, fresh spring water in the Glenmorangie pitcher today. Water on the 2022, here we go. Again, that deep earthy vegetal notes popping a bit more here. A lot of oak spice. It's got a little bit of this kind of funky marine quality to it. You're getting more of that kind of fermented note, seaweed almost, as funny as that sounds. But it's there. Here we go. Hmm. What a monster. The water does tone that fresh cut wood note down just a bit. You're getting a much more cinnamon, gingery spice, cinnamon red hot candy again. A lot of oak coming in on the back end, that dark chocolate notes. Cocoa powder has been amped up a bit even more. That smoky bacon note that I was getting before has kind of receded a bit here. Ash smoke, sweetness from the kind of confectionery vanilla chocolate combination going into the finish, medium, medium one. Hot, good, very spicy. Back over here to the 2021 version. And a bit gentler, a bit more refined, a bit more expressive in terms of its complexity. Sweet, sour. I'm getting a much more a kind of citric note than I was before. It's well-rounded though. Some orange, some caramel, toffee, vanilla, all of that. Pear, fresh fruit. Even a bit of kind of a floral effervescence. Smoke and peat still there, but playing much more in balance. Here we go. Mm. Boy, that's good. Sweeter than the 2022. Um, getting much brighter, fresher fruit notes. But it does still have layers to it even with water the the spicy oak heat still pretty aggressive a bit more drying but you've got a ton of that just great lagavulin smokiness fruity notes sweet sugary notes vanilla cat uh, vanilla and uh coming off that bourbon cask definitely in effect here a bit more with water this one's just more in balance. It's a wider range of flavor experience, it seems, whereas the 2022 is a bit tighter and more concentrated on that smokier, spicier um, presentation. Medium long finish here. All right, good stuff. So we're going to talk value now. Both of these whiskeys here in 2022 um, first and foremost, you're, they are not exactly rare, but they're not always the easiest thing to find. If you find these on the shelf in the U.S., uh, it may take a little bit of hunting. If you look online here at U.S. shops, you might have a little more luck finding them. If you do, you are looking in the $140 to $150, uh, $150 range. Um, if you look overseas, you might be able to shave 10 bucks off that, but these are, these are really pretty much universally in that 140 to 150 range. Even with that price, the quality of these whiskeys as, as tasted here in these two expressions, I think, uh, give this a medium value, perhaps even a medium high value. In fact, I'm going to give it a medium high value. I think they're both that good. Okay. So. Let's talk final thoughts. First and foremost, um, I've said, hey, let's drop $150 on this whiskey. Why is that? Well, 
To put it pretty simply, the Lagavulin 12 is a just masterclass in Isla single malt scotch. It is at an age that is bringing both complexity and intensity that I think are seldom found um, quite as uh, artistically done as you do find in these two whiskeys. Um, there was a time not so long ago that these were around $120. Um, unfortunately, that is no more. But as, when it comes to this, these two releases here, I think these are both um, worth the money. Now, over the past couple of years, particularly the 2020 version, 2019, uh, we're not as well received by whiskey heads and folks who are particularly big Lagavulin fans. Um, I do think both of these uh, should resolve any of those questions lingering concerns that maybe Lagavulin 12s are taking a turn for the worse. Um, I think both of these are quality drams to have on your bar. Um, if you can find older ones, 2018, 2017, 2015s, uh, you know, those may be worth an investment, but maybe give one of these a try first, just to make sure you know what you're getting into. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to buy one of these, I think the 2021 version the Lion's Fire. This is the one you're going to want to look for. This is a really, a, in some ways, a return to form for this range um, after a couple of years that were, as I mentioned, somewhat questionable. I think this one just has the quality and the range of flavor experience that really creates a situation where you can have a lot of fun trying to explore this and picking out different notes. I think it is a great example of what Lagavulin 12 years old at cast strength can offer. And with that, I'm going to give this a 4.25 out of 5. Um, so a buy it score for sure on this one. Now, when we talk about the 2022, they did something a little different, a little bit out of character for the range by adding the virgin oak. Do I think it make made or break, break, broke this whiskey? No. Um, I do think it brought an extra intensity and spiciness that as of right now to me is, is while enjoyable and fun, taking a little bit away from all of the kind of subtle complexities that you can experience with Lagavulin whiskey, particularly with the 12 and the 16. Um, I think this is still a really nice bottle. Um, it's definitely gonna be fun to continue drinking and exploring. I don't think it quite matches up to what they did last year. So the 2022, Flames of the Phoenix with the Virgin Oak. I'm going to give a very respectable 3.75 out of 5. So for me, of course, that is a, uh, I do recommend you grab this if you find it at a really nice price where you can afford it or give it a try first. Um, if you like the flavor profile and the more oak intensity uh, that you're getting out of this, definitely pick it up. But um, for me, the 2021 is the winner with the 4.25 out of 5. Um, so if you do get a chance to find this and keep looking now, because these may not be around for a whole lot longer, this is a real winner. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to sit back and enjoy the rest of these drams. Do let me know, leave a comment. Have you had any of these before? Do you agree, disagree with me? Uh, is this a range that you keep an eye on and try to purchase as many whiskeys as you can, or is this just not really your thing? Do you stick, stay away from the, uh, 12 year old cast drinks from Lagavulin? I'd be very interested to know. So leave a comment in with that send you on over to your Mount Musing and see you next time here on Mount Muse for Whiskey Reviews. Slaunch it up.